we've understood for many, many years that maternal nutrition during pregnancy affects lifelong health and lifelong capability of the offspring. We know this from animal models. We know this from observational studies in humans, including studies of the Dutch famine. However, with the advent of the genomic sciences and the advent of our increased understanding of human physiology, we now understand how powerful nutrition is in ensuring lifelong health. And a lot of the greatest advancements most recently in understanding the effect of nutrition during the very earliest stages of human development and lifelong health have come from our understanding of stem cells and stem cell physiology. And we understand now that embryonic stem cells sense the maternal environment and they try to then program their genome to best adapt how their physiology functions at the level of the cell based on the available resources from the mother, that is the nutrient supply. And we also know that once those stem cells differentiate and become then a terminal cell, whether it's a liver cell or a nerve cell, that that early nutritional experience and the way that the cell programmed itself to match itself to that environment now becomes locked in to a large extent. And so now you have this programming effect that happened very early in embryonic development, now that persists with lifelong consequences. So one of the challenges we have today is understanding what is optimal nutrition for a developing fetus. We know that malnutrition is, you know, programs the genome in a way that is going to be deleterious for the fetus as it then matures into adulthood. But what are the opportunities as well? How can we optimize those in utero exposures, especially maternal nutrition, so that we can not only prevent disease in the future, but rather program health that again persist lifelong? That's the big opportunity that we have now. One of the big challenges in human nutrition currently is the lack of good evidence in terms of what nutritional needs are for the infant. We currently do have guidelines both for maternal nutrition needs during gestation as well as what infant nutritional needs are. But many of these recommendations are based on extrapolations. That doesn't mean they're wrong, but there is a really dearth of information, direct information, studying infants and giving us then what is the optimal diet, the optimal nutrient exposures for infants age zero to two. So that's a huge gap in terms of the information we have to make the strongest possible recommendations. That said, there are currently, through many authoritative organizations, guidelines that we know work, that we know create healthy babies, but more research has to be done to strengthen that evidence base. So there's been a movement recently, particularly in the US, to begin to give dietary guidance, both in terms of the foods that we should eat, as well as the amounts of nutrients we should consume every day, and to tie that guidance to the prevention of chronic disease. In the past, most dietary guidance was based on functional indicators of nutrients, that is, what is the dose of a nutrient you need to optimize some physiological system or some metabolic system? But now with the increased connection between nutrition and disease, we're starting to ask the question, what dietary patterns or what nutrient intakes are needed to prevent chronic disease? And so this really puts us firmly into the medical evidence space, if you will, trying to understand that connection and to create normative values around the dose of food or the dose of nutrients one needs throughout the lifespan to then prevent chronic disease. Now this is going to be challenging, but what we do know is that for chronic diseases, they are complex traits. 
and risk for chronic disease not, not only comes from the food that we eat, but also how long we live. Age is a major risk factor for onset of chronic disease, as is our genetics, as are other environmental exposures, as is the bacteria in our gut. So given that, we have to understand that nutrition is just one component that leads to a chronic disease. So therefore, some of the most innovative work going on right now is trying to understand what are the biomarkers of aging? As we age, what can we measure at the level of the stem cell or at the level of the organ or in our serum that gives us some sense of how well we're aging? Are we aging on a healthy trajectory or are we aging on an unhealthy trajectory that's going to lead us to chronic disease? Once we fully understand these biomarkers of aging, be it healthy aging or unhealthy aging, we can then begin to explore how diet affects those biomarkers and how we can use nutrition to maximize healthy aging for as long as possible. Some of the most exciting research that's going on to try to understand not only human longevity, that is how many years can we live, but how many years can we live with a high quality of life come from the stem cell field, where investigators have looked at model organism, whether it's mice or whether it's flies or whether it's worms, and asking the question, how can you maintain the optimal number of stem cells lifelong, both in the number of stem cells as well as the quality of those stem cells? Because there's increasing evidence that for some chronic disease states, you actually have a menopause of stem cells. That is, you run out of these cells, and so therefore you lose the regenerative capacity of that organ. So there's a lot of work going on now in the stem cell field looking at what are the unique nutritional needs of the stem cell? How can we, can we ensure that these nutritional inputs maintain their genome such that it is a healthy genome, that it is epigenetically programmed so that it can di differentiate and renew the organ as well as limit the mutation rate of the DNA that also can compromise its ability to replicate and then to restore an organ that may be damaged by disease or again may be aging. So the area of regenerative medicine in context with nutrition I think is one of the most exciting areas where we can best advance our understanding of how nutrition promotes not only longevity but a healthy longevity.